Any Google search about MBA admissions will produce a maze of information from business schools themselves, websites like Poets and Quants and GMAT Club, and a slew of advisors with varying degrees of expertise. With so much information to digest, it can be hard to discern truth from myth. I'm Gabriela Samaya, Senior Consultant with MBA Mission. In 18 years of operation, we've heard every theory about the MBA application process imaginable. Given our extensive research, collective expertise, and relationships with admissions committees, we've learned which myths have merit and which are bunk. In this video, I'll discuss five common myths about MBA applications and why they don't hold up. Let's start with one of the most pervasive myths, that every candidate needs an elevator pitch. We often hear from candidates who are concerned that they can't synthesize their experiences into a single sentence or worry that their personal branding is muddled. Clients often come to us asking for help defining their single narrative because they've heard that to make an impression on admissions committees, the applicant must continuously speak to a single theme. Of course, no one is a simple product that can be neatly filed into one category or another. MBA candidates are not consumer products. In fact, presenting yourself as one-dimensional the consummate entrepreneur, the analytical private equity associate, is a mistake that prevents you from revealing your depth of character and experience. Think about how many applicants would fall into the finance bucket alone. To make an impressions on admissions committees, you need to be memorable, and that means standing out, not fitting into a one-note brand. At MBA Mission, we encourage candidates to brainstorm thoroughly and consider each of their stories from as many different perspectives as possible. No single formula exists for presenting yourself to the admissions committee. In fact, showing that you are a multi-talented and multifaceted individual is paramount when the goal is to break through the noise. After all, admissions committees are looking for the world's next great business leaders, and the true legends of international business cannot be easily summarized in a mere handful of words. Next, let's consider the myth that keeps candidates up at night, that a single weakness will derail their admissions chances. Consider two candidates. One graduated magna cum laude from a top college, was twice promoted early at BCG, and scored a 720 on the GMAT but she has a B- in freshman biology. Another candidate has an excellent GPA, was president of the Social Impact Club at college, founded a nonprofit that teaches computer programming to high school kids from his hometown, and is a board member of his alumni organization, but he's never been promoted. Or perhaps most relevant today, a candidate with an excellent profile in every respect, but just lost his job when his company went through a round of layoffs. Are these candidates' chances of admissions ruined? Rest assured, the answer is no. Not at all. These questions may seem silly. The individual's strengths are obvious and their weaknesses comparatively innocuous. We get asked about scenarios like these every day. In short, we can assure you that your candidacy, even at vaunted schools like Harvard and Stanford, is not in jeopardy because of such trivial shortcomings. Admissions officers understand that even the most remarkable individuals are not flawless. They're not looking for little reasons to exclude you from contention. What does this mean for you? Rather than fixating on small details that are inconsequential, you should think about the big picture with respect to your overall competitiveness. You can take our word on this, or if you prefer, heed the words of a former admissions officer at Wharton who explained to MBA Mission that everyone has something, or more than one thing, in their application that they need to overcome. But, he added, we read with an eye toward wanting to find all the good things about an applicant. We look for their strengths. We look for things that make them stand out, that make them unique. Myth number three is one we hear every season. Managerial experience is a prerequisite for admission. The irony of this myth should be apparent. After all, business school is for individuals who aspire to become managers, but it persists. If you haven't had direct reports to date, don't rule yourself out. Admissions officers understand that management responsibilities vary between companies and are not the only marker of success. For example, consider the numerous investment banking analysts who apply to MBA programs each year. Analysts are at the bottom of the bank's organizational charts and therefore do not have staffs to manage, but they still have demanding jobs and must perform exceptionally well each day to succeed. Or consider applicants with small business experience. They may not have enough personnel for a hierarchical organizational structure, but they can likely speak to the breadth of their experience and the higher level of responsibility that comes with fewer layers between them and the decision makers. So even without a title and a staff, there are ample other ways to demonstrate leadership and de facto management skills. With sufficient reflection, we suspect you'll find leadership in informal and unexpected places. Myth number four is one of the biggest mistakes a candidate can make. 
that applicants don't need to rework their resumes for business school. At this point in your career, you likely have a recent version of your resume stored somewhere on your laptop. It earned you a job, so it ought to suffice for an MBA application, right? But admissions officers are not hiring managers. They're looking for different indicators of your impact and potential. One of the most common errors candidates make is leaving their resume in an industry-specific format filled with jargon and acronyms recognizable only to an expert in their field. Remember, the admissions committee is not hiring you for a task, but is trying to understand your progress, your accomplishments, and even your character. Each bullet point in your resume should highlight an achievement more than functional expertise. Admissions officers review applicants' resumes carefully because they serve as a roadmap of each candidate's career. Your goal is to craft a clear, easily scannable, action and results oriented resume that tells a story that will capture the attention of an admissions officer who has reviewed hundreds of similar files. There is no shortage of MBA admissions myths, but for today we'll evaluate one final myth. That alumni connections are the key to the MBA kingdom. From time to time, we at MBA Mission visit admissions officers at the top ranked business schools, which gives us the opportunity to ask rather frank questions. On one such visit, we urged an admissions officer to give us the truth about the extent of alumni influence in the admissions process, and the response we got was rather surprising. She said, we get 10 letters each year from a globally famous alumnus telling us that this candidate or that candidate is the greatest thing since sliced bread. He gets upset when we won't admit his applicants, but what makes him think he deserves to decide 10 spots in our class? Many applicants fret about their lack of personal alumni connection with their target schools. And the myth persists that admission to business school is about who you know rather than who you are or what you can offer. We are not naive. Some extreme exceptions exist where influence can be exerted. But in our experience, admissions committees are focused on identifying individuals who have demonstrated commitment, vision, impact, and empathy. They also want to ensure that a diversity of ideas and experiences is represented in the classroom. Harvard Business School, for example, has approximately 900 students in each incoming class, and the vast majority of these students do not personally know the CEO or the president of a country. And who knows, these days, such connections could even be a liability. We hope you found these Mythbusters useful, and perhaps a relief. If you'd like a candid assessment of your profile based on what we have learned really matters to admissions committees, sign up for a free consultation with me or one of my colleagues at MBA Mission. And if you like this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to our channel for even more MBA admissions advice and resources. Thanks so much for watching, and we wish you the best of luck on your journey to business school.